Hello everyone, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and today we're going to talk about getting started with your guardian angel. So what are guardian angels? How do we connect with them? Why would we connect with them? So let's just dive right in and talk about it. Your guardian angels are just that. They are angels, they're fifth dimensional beings and when you were born in, you have these angels assigned to you. Now there's no set limit on how many guardian angels you can have, although in my experience, a lot of people do tend to have two, uh, two, two main ones. And then as you go through various things in your life, you might have other angels who come on in. They might be set back a little ways, but they'll come in and help you as needed. Now, in order for you to connect with your guardian angel, you have to know that you are worthy. And I know that seems like a silly thing to say, but often this is what blocks people from getting to know their angels and from leaning on them. Now, conversely, we have other people who go way too far the other way with their guardian angels and they end up getting this codependent relationship with their angels. Now, the angels are highly intelligent beings. When you start to get into that phase where you're getting disempowered and you won't make a move until you get some confirmation from your guardian angels, you may find that they back off and that they get very, very quiet. This is one of those things that I get when people get reading requests with me. They say, my angels have gone silent. Well, it's because you're supposed to implement the guidance that they've already provided for you. They want you to be a free will creature, you know, exercising your free will and creating things for yourself. Now there, I will just address this right now. There, there is some danger with some people, okay? They want so much to believe, they end up falling into magical thinking and um, what they are calling their angels are not their angels. These are probably astral, plain beings that are coming and imposing as angels, which is not as easy as you would think. But again, with some people, they so don't know the difference you know, they just know if there's a being outside of them. Oh, that must be my angel. Um, and I really would love to educate people on, on the difference. So let's just do it. <laughs> okay. You know, it is your guardian angel when you feel no judgment, when you feel unconditional love, when you feel this warmth. So people have different experiences, but for me, it's sort of this cozy warmth that just comes around me and everything that just had me frazzled or everything that just had me upset or I was worried about or, you know, contemplating what I'm going to do in the future, all, you know, spinning out of control, <laughs> right? Suddenly it's all good. It, it's completely peaceful. It doesn't matter. I, I start to have a higher understanding that this is just a story that's playing out. And I don't need to get deeply invested in the details of this story. And I can have faith and trust. So there's a sense of peace. Now, people who come to me, again, for personal readings, and they will say something like, my guardian angel told me that I'm supposed to move to San Francisco. And I don't want to move to San Francisco because that doesn't seem like the right thing. All right, well, let's divide and conquer here. Um, could it be that your angel tells you to move to San Francisco? <sighs> if you're meditating and you're already in your free will choices, you are contemplating moving to San Francisco or Los Angeles, and you say, guardian angels, can you guide me to where my, you know, my best life would be? You know, what would be a better choice for me? Guardian angels, because they have to go by God's law and because they can't interfere, with your free will, they're not going to tell you what to do quite like that. They guide you, but they don't full on come in and try to live your life for you. If you were to pose the question of, do I live in San Francisco or do I live in Los Angeles? They might uh, have a feeling come through you or show you a vision of what your life would be potentially in the current energy that you're in, what that feeling would be like in San Francisco, and then they would give it in Los Angeles. But, you know, they might also at times guide you and say, you know, San Francisco is better for your growth or, you know, they, they'll give little hints like that, but ultimately the choice is yours. So we want to have this healthy balance once we, and I'll talk about how to connect with your guardian angels, but once you meet and connect with your guardian angels, let's have a very, very healthy relationship with them. Remember, you do not need to lean on your guardian angel for every little thing. You're here to live your life. They will not live your life for you. Now, getting to know your guardian angel is one of the most special things that you can do as a human. And I highly recommend that you do not pay somebody 
to tell you the name of your guardian angel. When people come to me and they ask what the name of their guardian angel is, I often will not do it. I just won't do it. And here's why. Angels actually don't have names. What, what, what? The archangels are all named. The archangels were created to watch over humans. There was a human brain design, a third dimensional ego consciousness. And this is going to be a consciousness that is very compartmentalized. <laughs> that is going to need to have things divided out to process it. We uh, humans are very linear thinking. We even think of time as being linear and having segments and everything has to have a meaning. Everything has to have, it has to come around to a complete and whole story. So the beings that were created to watch over us, they too are compartmentalized. Okay. We're actually all one. All the archangels of, are of source, right? But we, because we needed help in understanding them and also being able to piece out their energy so it's not too overwhelming, they get compartmentalized and they all have names, okay? Your guardian angel doesn't actually need to have a name. Now let's get into this for a little bit because this can be a little bit confusing because everybody has a different experience. Angels and archangels recognize each other through frequency. So again, that's a human convention that there needs to be segmented duties and there needs to be a label and you know, all this stuff. As far as your guardian angels go, which are the fifth dimensional uh, angels as opposed to archangels that are seventh dimension and above, nobody really knows what the heck happens in sixth dimension. <laughs> Metatron, Archangel Metatron oversees the sixth dimension. I think of it as uh, mission control. I do have a guardian angel named Bartholomew who comes from the sixth dimension. So again, it, 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 it's too much to get into. But anyway, <laughs> your guardian angels, uh, because they recognize one another and they recognize you through frequency, if you tune into them, we'll talk about that, but if you tune into them and you ask what their name is, you may hear them say, name me. That's what my guardian, one of my guardian angels, Alzekia. That's what she did. She just kept saying, name me, name me. And I was being a real pain with her. I was like, no, for real, what, what is your name? And she had to really slow her frequency down to make it sound kind of like a human word. And the closest I could come to was Alzekia. That's her frequency put into a human word. I could have just said Allison. I just could have said Allie. It would not have mattered, okay? It does not matter. It does not matter. Names only matter to us. Now, spirit guides are a little bit different because they're fourth dimensional beings. They're a little bit closer to our frequency. So they're used to names. They might already have a name. You might have already agreed, okay, you know, when I, when I finally go in and are incarnate, you know, you'll be known as Michael. You'll be known as Samantha. You'll be known as Lily, you know, whatever. And I'll come to you with that name. Angels are in a different dimension, a completely different dimension. So feel free if you don't automatically hear a name to say, may I call you and just come up with the most loving name that you can think of, okay? I'm sure they'll have no problem with that. Now, conversely, you might also tune in and immediately hear a name. This does happen from time to time, and that could indicate that you've either already worked with that angel at some point, or you sort of pre, uh, pre-agreed, just like the spirit guide, you kind of pre-agreed some sort of name. Now, my other spirit guide who, again, he's sort of, as I say, the sixth dimension is mission, mission control. He's sort of like mission control over guiding me. <laughs> so, um, you know, when I tuned into him, he automatically came up and said, Jeremiah, I'm Jeremiah. I know you. Yes, you do. I, I've worked with, yes, you have. And that's another way that you know you're communicating with angels because they're, they know what you're going to say before you say it, <laughs> all right? And that is kind of good. I remember when I uh, met Archangel Gabriel, and I do have a video called How I Met Archangel Gabriel. It's a little embarrassing. It's one of the first videos that I did, so poor lighting, you know, all the stuff all right, that comes with your first video. Um, but when he came in, um, I would start to ask, is this? He says, yes. No, no, no. Is this Archangel Gabriel? Yes. You know, so <laughs> they work a lot faster than you realize. So that's one way that you know that you're working with an angel. Now, the other way that you'll know that you're working with an angel, again, because of the loving presence, they will never tell you anything uh, that would make you feel bad. Now, when people get personal readings with me, the angels are incredibly honest. 
and we might tell you something that you have a hard time hearing, but it's not something that is meant to hurt you. Okay. So for example, if somebody comes and says, Michelle, I can't find my soulmate. Where's my soulmate? So a couple of things happen with a personal reading. I'm sorry, I keep bringing up personal reading. It's just, that's my point of reference and that's my experience. Okay. <laughs> so that's what I can share with you. That's what I can offer. That's what I've learned from. So, um, there are a couple of things that happen. I'm tuning in with the permission of that person. I'm tuning into their energy. Yes. And so I'm acting as like a reflector back to some things, you know, that they are numb to. There's all this angelic communication going on, whether it's with guardian angels or archangels that want to work with this person, perhaps. And we're letting them know, okay, this, this is what you need to be aware of right now. So perhaps, you know, what I'm reflecting back in my sensitivities and what I can do, because that's part of my path as well, is to reflect back to people. Combined with angelic messages coming through, the message might be, my love, you have to process the trauma from when you were seven. And this might spark that person and they may not want to hear that and they might wish that they had never gotten a reading. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, is that that just broke them open to move forward on their path to help them finally remember and contend with whatever it is that is blocking them from what they want. Okay. Now, how do you connect with your angel? It's the same kind of thing as I said with spirit guides, meditation. Meditation is going to be your best friend. Now, some people, uh, they, they just don't have that angelic telephone line. So just know that everybody is going to connect in a different way, perhaps, um, and in different timing. So don't be in a huge hurry. If you meditate the first 10 times and you feel like you're not getting any answer from your angels, it's, it's not, I'm laughing because it's not because angels aren't talking to you. Of course they are. But I got this uh, sudden image in my head that they're like, you know, pressed up against the glass, and like pounding on the glass, like, can you hear me? You know, they're trying to, <laughs> they're trying to get through to you. But, you know, you as a human, you know, in your story, you know, in, in this incarnation, there might be some things that you have to work around before you can get to, you know, raising your frequency high enough to kind of really, the way you feel you need to understand it, understand the angels. But even if you're not perceiving them, they are still working with you, whether you can perceive them or not. Okay. So what else can we tell you? So meditation, make sure you're nice and cleansed and cleared. If you are stuck in your ego, you will not understand your angels. You're in too low a frequency. Okay. Um, and that would be whether, and this is kind of hard too, because people are like, well, you know, what if I'm in a depression? Well, the angels, that's, that's a low frequency, but they can come in and make you feel comforted and, you know, loved. And all you have to say is angels help angels help. Okay. So no matter what you're going through, call out for help and don't ever think that they didn't answer you. They are absolutely answering you. You just may not be in a space where you can perceive it and that's okay. All right. Now, if you are, let's say you're only concerned about getting a lot of money. Okay. Money is not bad. Wanting money is not bad. But your intention behind that money, <laughs> that's going to be the make or break thing. If you're wanting money because you just want to be the most powerful person in the world, um, the angels, despite, I will go toe to toe with people who want to argue with me on this one. They claim like, oh, whatever you want, the angels will help you. No, if you're in it to, you know, again, have control over other human beings or you have, you're going to have some ill intent maybe with that money, they're not going to help you with that. They're also never going to tell you to cheat on your spouse. I've heard that one. I literally heard that one. I had a right to cheat on my spouse because my angels told me I could. Um, those are not angels. Those are demons. You are never permitted to harm another. If you're in an unsatisfactory relationship, you learn your lesson, you process it, you honor the connection that you had, and then you get out of it. Um, you know, so just... Be aware of that. That's one of the craziest things I've ever heard. The angels will never encourage you to harm yourself or to harm others. All right. So again, that's how you can tell the difference between I'm actually having an angel help me out or I have some soul that's posing 
as an angel. And you can always test it. You can always say, are you an angel of God's love and light? And just the fact that you're saying those words, they won't be able to hang around. They'll go pew, they'll just kind of go right out, okay? You can also invoke the protection of Archangel Michael when you are meditating, all right? So get out of your ego, have good intentions. Sorry, narcissists, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> or people who are very, very self-centered. I mean, do you still have guardian angels? Yeah, but I, I kind of picture them sitting around like playing cards waiting for you to come around. Um, you know, they're not going to help you harm other people. They're not going to help you be abusive. All right. But if you come to some, like, let's say you're on one end of the spectrum where it's not so bad and there's still kind of a shot for you, they can work with that. All right, but getting into meditation, lay down your ego, lay down the worries of the day, lay down your expectations. Oh, I cannot say that enough. I've been saying that since like I, I started Angel Souls. Lay down your expectations because if you come in and you think it's supposed to look like this and you're over here expecting it to look like this, maybe all the action's happening over here and you just missed it. Feel me? Okay. Things may not turn out the way you want them to. This is another thing. So let's say you ask, you, you get into meditation, you do your clearing, you're, you're getting deeply relaxed and you invite in your guardian angel and you're having your guardian angel experience. And then, you know, and your guardian angels will show up. Again, as far as you being able to per, uh, perceive them, you might just need to give it some practice, but, and they could come to you in a lot of different ways. <laughs> You'll know when you feel the love and the peace. But let's say you go into meditation and you say to your guardian angels, I want my dream house now. I want my dream house now. And perhaps on your soul's path, on your timeline, as far as lessons go, you're gonna be better served if you live in another apartment. Maybe you wanted a house, but you're gonna to have to go to another apartment because there's something there, you know, maybe you wouldn't have been happy in a house because maybe you would have felt too isolated. And, or maybe the timing wasn't right. Remember, we're you know on this earth plane with other people with free wills. And the people that we are supposed to interact with, yes, maybe they need to catch up to where we are. We need to catch up to where they are. And we need to be in an, an apartment for you know, a short period of time. Because if you weren't, you wouldn't have learned your lessons to, learn the, to meet the people that you needed to meet. There's a whole lot of orchestration that goes on here so that you're at the right place at the right time. So if you ask for something and you feel like you're not getting it, trust that. Trust that there is something, there's a lot of stuff you don't know that is being worked out. That somehow you would not have been as happy as you thought you would be. See, we as humans, we get this um, ego consciousness going and we're like, oh no, we're, you know, I, if I only had this or if I only had that, my life would be so much better. But the angels see what we cannot see. They see what we've become numb to. They understand us in a way better than we do because they have such a higher perspective. They see the good in us, even when we think we're bad. They believe in us even when we think we have no talent. They know what our potentials are, even when we're ready to give up. So remember that. If you are not getting what you want, if you are not getting what you had expected or anticipated, be incredibly grateful for whatever comes forward because that was the best thing for you, okay? Leave your questions down below. And when I say leave your questions down below, I do not mean private questions about you trying to get a free reading. If you want a personal reading, you go to my website at angelsouls444.com, the services page. If you are a reader, this is exactly how you have to handle situations like that. You're welcome. <laughs> Other than that, if you want to leave your general questions about angels that might help other people, I will do my best to answer them. If I can't answer them right away, it's because I'm on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook trying to do my jam. Okay, I hope this information was helpful for you guys. I am sending you so much love and take care.